Salutations. Welcome to Strategy and Analysis Centre for unique coverage of critical geostrategic issues. Today's briefing, Type 055 Super Destroyer. Why it's more significant than many think. The bottom line is China's Type 055 is a flexible, powerful vessel with potentially a unique weapon and room for growth. Some key phrases from today's briefing, uh, VLS, Vertical Launch System, IEP, Independent Electric Propulsion, DEW, Directed Energy Weapons, think lasers or microwave weapons, and ASBMs, Anti-Ship Ballistic Missiles. So what role does the Type 055 play for the PLAN, the Chinese Navy? Well, I'm going to... I'm going to answer that later, but first, let's compare the Type 055 to some other contemporaries. Now, there are many ships we could use in this comparison, but I've chosen uh, two other ships that are of broadly similar size and that both also play in important roles or were to play important roles for their um, respective navies. And I'm going to be looking at the Slava and the Zomwal. So first, um, the Slava-class cruiser from the former Soviet Navy, now Russian Navy. And uh, a big ship, and we're going to talk about some of those details um, shortly. Um, but in particular, uh, you'll notice it's uh, eight on each side, so 16, long-range, very large, very capable anti-ship missiles. Uh, it's vertical launch, or VLS, vertical launch system cells uh, near the stern, just forward of the hangar. Uh, and then there are additional weapon systems, short range surface to air pop-up systems on either side of the hangar as circled there. So that's the Slava, very big, uh, powerful ship. Um, three were completed. All three are still in active service, and uh, all three, as I understand it, are currently in operations with the Russian Navy in the Black Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean, uh, involved in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The other ship I want to use in this comparison is the US Navy's Zomor-class destroyer. Um, Many people will be aware of this. You can see it's a very unique design in some ways, and in some ways it's back to the future with its uh, hull form. Um, and obviously designed, when you look at the superstructure, for reduced radar cross-section. Uh, so a very unique ship. Now, there are currently two in service with a further soon to be in service, but that will be it. There'll be no more than three, as so far stated by the US government, the US Navy, of these. So we have three Slavas and soon to be three Zomolts. And there's just another view of the Zomolt uh, from a different angle. Now, its vertical launch systems are different to basically every other ship in that rather than being along the center line, the Zomwalt's VLS are on the side of the hull. So the comparison of these vehicles, so in the top part, comparison of these three selected vehicles, the Zomwalt, US Navy destroyer, the Slava, Russian, previously Soviet uh, cruiser, and the Chinese Type 055, Chinese call it a destroyer, the US calls it a cruiser. Um, so you can see the Zomwalt is the largest of these. Uh, the displacements for the Slava and the Type 055 are approximate. There are a number of figures out there, slightly less, slightly more than both of those figures. That They're close enough for the uh, order of magnitude that we need for this discussion. So we have the length, 
the beam is displacement in tons. VLS cells, then other, other, uh, other tubes, uh, not VLS for weapons. So when we looked at the Slava, you saw 16 uh, slant launched canister or tubes. That's part of those for um, the Slava under other. Um, and for the Type 055, they are for what would be similar to the US and Allied nations rolling airframe missile uh, short range air defense system that's on the stern of the ship above the hangar, and I'll show you that later. Uh, an important note that with the Zomwald, uh, each cell could potentially have uh, four missiles. It's what's called quad packed for short range surface to air missiles, um, although you would only have some of your total cells allocated, dedicated to that if indeed you did go that path. Uh, for the Type 055, we don't know yet if the Chinese have that capability of quad packing um, a cell. So for this, we just have the number of cells and other launch tubes, if you like. So that's the other. And then the total, of course, the cells plus other launch tubes. And the final column there is the helos or helicopters. See, the Zomwalt has two uh, SH-60 Seahawks, which are very good, very capable, medium-sized anti-submarine warfare helos. The Slava only has one KA-27, broadly the same capacity, and the Type 005 can take two Z-18s, which are larger and very capable ASW helos. So that's a broad comparison of uh, the overall dimensions of these three vessels that we're going to discuss today. So you can see from this that um, the Type 055 is actually the smallest of the three vessels, but has the largest number of uh, VLS cells and the best uh, anti-submarine warfare capability in terms of embarked rotary wing assets, the helicopters. Um, also with the Slava, with its VLS cells, they are dedicated to long-range surface-to-air missile systems. They can't be used for um, other purposes, again, submarines or ships. So that takes away some of the flexibility of the Slava. For the Zomwalt and the Type 055, their VLS cells can be used for a range of weapons. Now the VLS dimensions are particularly important for this briefing. In the second table here, you'll see I've mentioned the Type 055 and the Zomwalt, and the length and diameter here refer to their VLS cells. So for the Zomwalt, uh, 7.2 metres of length for the cell, and 0.71 meters, so 71 centimeters for the diameter. Now these are these are bigger cells, certainly bigger diameter, although not necessarily in length, than the traditional Mark 41 VLS system that you see on all other US and indeed most Allied navies. Um, so these probably represent the most capable US and Allied VLS systems in terms of the capacity of the cell. The Type 055, as you can see, has both a longer and greater diameter cell. So that that adds to the flexibility of um, the weapon systems that can be uh, employed in these cells, giving a greater range and a greater potential of either firepower, uh, a warhead, and or range of those systems. So as I said, you can see from this that um, the Type 55, uh, Type 055 is not the biggest, but I would argue has the most flexible arrangement for weapons, given both the number of VLS cells and the size of the VLS uh, cells. Now, there have been suggestions that the Type 055 will field ASBMs, anti-ship ballistic missiles. China already has 
ballistic missiles in broadly the appropriate size that could fit into these um, BLS cells. Plus, it's already developed targeting for use against ships for anti-ship ballistic missiles, land-based, of course, here. Now, of course, the US um, Navy has concerns over anti-ship ballistic missiles because they're difficult to defend against. So being able to deploy or field ASBMs at sea is a very logical approach for, for China. So in the, in the bottom uh, table here, uh, BLS dimensions and ballistic missiles, I've given three examples of um, operational Chinese ballistic missiles. The DF-21D, people will be familiar with, that's the, uh, the ASBM, anti-ship ballistic missile, that many people are familiar with. Um, it's quite a large missile, long range. Um, I've also put in here just two other examples of Chinese land-based ASBMs, just to give a sense of size and range. So the DF-11 Alpha and the DF-12. Um, just to show that within the capacity of the VLS, VLS um, cells on the Type 055, you could get a ballistic missile with a, uh, a good size warhead uh, and a good size range, and a good, a good range. Um, so it's certainly feasible that China could develop an anti-ship ballistic missile and fit it within the cells, the VLS cells of the Type 055. Now, yeah, some think ASBMs are unlikely to be accurate enough to, to sink a vessel. Um, the, the targeting to get that unitary warhead onto a, a vessel which may not be large, even an aircraft carrier. But you don't actually need to sink an aircraft carrier. You just need to render it you know, we call um, hawse the combat you know, out of action due to damage. So you don't have to sink it, apart from putting a torpedo into the rudder. Um, another way is just by using what we call a, um, a runway denial style weapon, which would be ideal for this purpose. So it's not a singular or unitary warhead, as many people think when they're thinking about these anti-ship ballistic missiles being used against aircraft carriers. But it's a uh, submunitions, so a warhead with bomblets, if you like. So what you see on this slide is an example of submunitions used on a runway. It's a runway denial weapon, um, where you're looking to create multiple, generally small, craters that take out the runway, render it hors to combat. This slide shows. A, a, a hypothetical or a mock aircraft carrier deck. Now it's just done as a rectangle for the purposes of the exercise, but it shows uh, submunition damage from a ballistic missile against an aircraft carrier target. So as I showed in the previous slide with the runway, the runway denial weapon, this is all you need to effectively render an aircraft carrier hors to combat out of action. You don't need to sink it, you just need to take out its runway. So I said earlier we need to talk about what's the role of the 055. So the 055, the Type 055 destroyer, with long range surface to surface missiles, would be a very useful addition to Plan 16 Liaoning and Plan 17 Shandong, uh, given that those aircraft carriers had limited fixed wing capabilities. So a Type 055 plus one of the carriers would, would complement each other nicely. You have the carrier providing the combat air patrol, airborne early warning, and rotary wing anti-submarine warfare through helicopters. And you have the Type 055 providing that long range surface strike, whether it's against uh, land targets or maritime targets, surface vessels, through which long range uh, weapon systems. So they could complement each other nicely. Yeah, the Type 055 
might mean that you don't need an aircraft carrier for a particular operation. Given the, the number of weapons it can carry, remember all the uh, VLS cells that it has, uh, and the size of those cells, and the range of weapons that the 055 can carry. So you could see it either by itself or with other 055s uh, leading a surface action group without the need for an aircraft carrier. Another point that's I think very important for the 055, it's, it's of a good size that allows for future enhancements, be that independent electric propulsion, IP, directed energy weapons, lasers, uh, or rail guns, it provides a, a, a proven good size hull that could then be uh, go through an evolutionary development to enhance it. So the type, in summary, the type 055 provides a good size hull that can be further be enhanced and can be filled in in numbers. It's not too big and it's not too exotic like the, uh, the Zomwalt. It has a good number of VLS cells and of a very good size. So that gives great flexibility in terms of the type of weapons it can carry and the, vari uh, the number of weapons, not just the variety, but the total number. Uh, with the likelihood of fielding ASBMs as well, which are the most difficult threat at the moment for the US Navy to defend against. It provides an ideal complement to Plan 16 Liaoning and 17 Shandong with its long range service missiles, both for, as I said, land and maritime targets. So the pairing together gives you something akin to um, a small Caddo Bar conventional aircraft carrier, which I've talked about in previous briefings. As I said, depending on the mission, you may be able to operate without a carrier in support, given the number and uh, ability of the weapon systems that uh, 055 can, can, uh, can employ. So the role, well, it could provide area air defense, long range surface strike, carrier escort, well, and even in any submarine warfare, uh, apart from all the normal sensors with total rays sonar and hull mounted sonar and variable, variable depth sonar, it also carries two big, very capable anti submarine warfare helos. So, really, it's a multi role large surface combatant. And again, it's an evolutionary rather than a revolutionary step, I'd suggest. When we look at, and I've mentioned this before in my carrier briefings, that how China has developed uh, ships, when you look at the aircraft carriers from carrier one to two to three, very much an evolutionary process. And if you look at the Type 052 destroyer family, which precedes this, again, it's very much an evolutionary process, largely building on something that's proven and slightly adding to that each time. So it reduces risks, very much in contrast to the Zomwalt class uh, destroyer. Assessment, I think it's highly likely that the Type 055 will be equipped with ASBMs. Uh, I can make that assessment with a high degree of confidence. I think it's very likely that the 055s will be built in substantial numbers and incrementally improved with each iteration. Uh, that concludes today's briefing. Uh, subsequent briefings, I will look at uh, the future of China's carrier program. Uh, thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers. So please like, subscribe and share. Until next time, Fale de Serre.